Here at 3258, we're proud to present you with the best football-specific content. We work with many companies and many ballers to give you, the viewers, the best content possible. You, the viewer, we're always looking to help you improve your skill set. In order for you to improve your skill set and for us to keep making these videos, please click the link down below and buy some equipment. The equipment helps us run this channel and also you subscribing to the channel helps us producing more of these videos to help you with your skill set and your knowledge of the game. Thank you for supporting 4258. on how it all got started for you man like mm. let's let's touch on that um so what was your okay what age did you get into football and did you even like football when you got into it obviously growing up it was like we we all in my area everyone wants to play football mm. um growing up in my school like, everyone was playing football so yeah. you had no choice there was it wasn't no basketball <laughs> hockey cricket. cricket people were playing cricket like Nah, it was when we play PE, it's football. Yeah, if yeah. not football, it's rounders. If it's not rounders, then any other thing, we're not playing it. Innit? Yeah, yeah. And so, like, growing up, it was literally football. And I remember my school mm. coach, Donovan, he used to um, take us and do sessions with us and then mm. take us to a place called Ferndale near me. Okay. And we would play uh, against other schools. Yeah. Um, and so I started in school, obviously, primary school. Mm. Um, and then I was kicking, but I wasn't, I wasn't the best. I, I wasn't like, there was about a good three, four people better than me okay. in, my, in, my, in, my, in my age in primary school. Um, and yeah, that was that. was that. And obviously one day I remember I was kicking outside my estate. Not my estate, but like, yeah. And um, my coach, that was to be my coach, um, he saw me playing and he saw my brother. And yeah. this is a true story. And he goes to my, he goes to me and my brother's playing football. And he goes, mm -hmm. he points at me and goes, you're going to be the footballer. And he points at my brother and he goes, you're going to be counting his money. <laughs> <laughs> and then my uh, brother was like, "No, no, no, that's not gonna happen." No, no, no. You know, he didn't then, want to accept um, it. No, he didn't want to accept it. <laughs> and so this is actually a hilarious story. Um, and then like, he just said that, and then me and my brother started training with him. We played for his Sunday league teams right up until we were twelve, thirteen. Okay. Yeah. And then my brother went to we we had various trials in the meantime, mm. but like we just never got in. I was at Fulham for ages. Okay. Um, didn't. Like on trial at the development center, they didn't get me through. Um, yeah. Then I went to. Then I just started playing Sunday league, and I just enjoyed it. Yeah. But like I was really, really doing my thing. At Afui, um, and then obviously done my thing there, done my thing, and obviously went into secondary school. Mm. Um, I was still playing for them in my first was in year seven, sorry. Yeah. And then uh, I moved on. My PE teacher he referred me to South London District. Yeah. Which is like the best players of South London get together we play against like North London which is Brent which is way off from yeah. and we play against different different teams um, luckily I got to um, captain them did you go to youth games by the way I didn't, I didn't I didn't oh I didn't go to youth games yeah um, I captained them and whatnot, um, and then shortly after I um, was able to get into in the London County which is even bigger so it's all the best Londons in London yeah. best players in London mm. we play, get together played and um, funnily enough the Coach of South London District was the head scout at Wickham. Okay. So he got me in there, um, not got me in, we actually played against them and then obviously mm -hmm. I got in. Um, and from there I was kind of playing with them, um, doing my thing. Um, and then I was always playing up, um, which worked to my benefit because like, that's how I got the trial for Arsenal and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I had a trial. Um, who else would I go that I went to? In fact, before I was going to sign for them, I had to chance to go on trial for Charlton okay um, but some some reason or another I, I didn't go mm. um, I remember actually I sat down in the car park with my dad and he said look we can want to sign you and you could go on trial for Charlton but my dad wanted me to go to Charlton innit? Cause they, were, they were in the Prem them times innit? oh right yeah. so it was like he was like you have a chance and I was like mm, nah I'd rather be like where I'm playing and I'm loved and I'm the best player mm -hmm. and I can develop 
Well, I was going there, I might get lost in there. And that was my only worry. Yeah. I was about 13 them times. I said, all right, it's your choice, isn't it? Mm. Sign for Wickham. Do you think that was the best choice back then? Yeah. 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 Um, Because obviously I went to Wickham at the age of 14. I made my reserve appearance. Oh, wow. Um, At the age of 15, I started training with the first team. By the way, that's like... You're 15 years old. You're still in school. You're playing with men. You're, you're playing with men. Yeah. So that's not, it's not a discussion to be honest. You know, that's, that's probably the best route. Yeah. Yeah, I think. And so um, I was obviously playing with men and whatnot. Um, and then what happened was, yeah, I was training with the first team, mm. playing reserves and whatnot. And then um, from that, I obviously got trials elsewhere. Yeah. Got trials at... Um, Chelsea um, didn't get in. Yeah. Um, but obviously through that, West Ham always wanted me since like under 14 kind of. But yeah. I didn't pursue it. Um, and so obviously I reached 15, and un- which is under 16 time, and the academy was to shut at the end of the season. Okay. So I had to find a team and whatnot. So um, what happened was I went on trials. That's when I went on trials to Chelsea, didn't get in. Mm. Um, and then West Ham just offered me a contract straight after that. Yeah, so there's, you know, you're you were kind of used to is what it sounds like. You're used to being set back. You know, it wasn't all sunshine and roses no, going no, through no, it. No. So when you ended up getting to West Ham, and you know you end up going through the youth there, and then you end up being at the pinnacle, really, like mm. where you want to be. You're playing in Europe. Mm. Um, well, West Ham were playing in Europe, and you got selected to to be in the squad. So how did that make you feel? And yeah, just talk about uh, that whole period. So it was actually a turbulent period that that time because it was like my first year pro. Okay. It was like my first year pro from no 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 no, 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 no it was second, my second year second, pro. Yeah, yeah, second year. And which this is how mad it was because my first year pro I didn't really get a chance because we had a new academy director, mm. um, and obviously I don't think that was his sort of player kind of thing. Yeah. So um, first year I kind of went out on loan. Um, second year. I my second year pro what happened was we were training mm. um, and they had to pick some players to actually go to but like during this time when when I'm at West Ham like I will always get called to train with the first team yeah it was um, thing. Yeah, yeah I was like I was one of the regulars that actually trained with the first team mm. so one time um, they obviously called me over we actually done pre-season in Cork yeah, that yeah. season we were together um, yeah with the first team yeah um, and obviously we came back and then we went back to the 23s yeah. and then um, they called me up and said that no, they didn't even call me up they put everyone's name on the list yeah yeah and um, I remember after training um, they said oh, make sure you have a look to see who's, who's um, part of the first team travelling yeah and I was like whatever but I didn't even look at it I walked past it you probably thought oh no yeah because you know in that situation when you've been set back so many times and, and people they don't believe in you yeah know, like even doesn't matter what you're doing, they just don't believe in you yeah. for whatever reason. You always think, you know, it's gonna it's gonna happen again sometimes, you know. Mm-hmm. But that's why you've got to stay mentally strong and you gotta be, you know, feel like, you know, sometimes you've got to get over that little hump that mm-hmm. you, you come across. So um yeah, explain when you looked at the So obviously I um, I walked I walked past it into the change room, got changed and whatnot, and someone said, Are oh, you on the list? And I was like, oh, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I went and checked it and I just saw my name. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so we got, I got changed and whatnot, and obviously it said meet at the airport tomorrow at this time. Mm. So I said, all right, cool. Um, went to the airport, I think I went with Leo, Leo Chambers. Mm. And we got there, um, and then... Heathrow? No, nah, it was like, yeah, I think, it was a Heathrow. Yeah, it was Heathrow, yeah, it was Heathrow. The back bit, innit? He was there, innit? I was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. it was Heathrow. Heathrow. But it's like, the, there was like private jets in at the back bit. Okay. There's, there's like the different engines. So we went in there now, and as soon as we got in there, we just scan your passport there, they look at your passport, you sit down, and you mm. get straight on the plane. And we went, we got straight on the plane, and I remember we got on the plane, and it was just us, literally us on the plane, and it was like, mm. and um, it was early, so they offered us breakfast. Yeah, yeah. And I asked the lady, what do you have to pay? <laughs> <laughs> and obviously it's a chartered plane, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And Leo kind of punched me and said, like, pattern up, like, you need to... <laughs> It's like, like embarrassing me, yeah, you embarrass like, you embarrass me kind of thing, like, everything's like, it's free, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we obviously had a free course meal on there, you just chilling and whatnot, you get there, and this was unreal because we got off the plane, and you go straight onto a bus, and on the bus, like, as we got out of the airport, there was police, 
mm. like escorting us yeah. to the airport, not to the hotel. Yeah, to the hotel. So there was like uh, police cars, police um, police cars in front, mm. motorbikes on the side. Then they're, mm. they're waiting you. You're going straight through traffic. Everything's crazy, and you get to the hotel and you just chill in. Yeah. And then um, yeah, the game the game was the next day. Mm. We slept whatever we had. Th- this was in a, this one was in Andorra or no? It was, it was in Romania. Either. Romania. Yeah, Romania. Romania. Yeah, yeah. This one. Is um, Romania. Yeah, you just touched on Leo Chambers. Like for me, one of the best defenders. The best. Um, the best. He's the best centre back I've ever played with. Yeah, for me. So, ever. Like that is what you call underrated. Yeah. 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 If he, you're talking about underrated player, he him. Yeah, he was rated. Yeah. But he wasn't rated how like the yeah. respect that like, you should put on this guy's yeah, name, yeah, like, you know, yeah. because um, it's just like, unfortunately injuries, you know, and yeah. that's really what cost him his career. But even someone asked about me, um, someone asked me the other day about him, you know, that and that says a lot. Like um, to this day, people, yeah, to this day, people are we're still asking about him, you know. So um, yeah, so we go to the game, blah blah. blah so. You're on the bench, so what what do you have in your mind when you're on the bench, you know? It's it's uh, be ready to come on. Yeah. Literally be ready to come on. Um unfortunately I didn't. Mm. But like for me that's one of my highlights, like Yeah. Europa League. Um obviously it was the qualifiers, but yeah. do you know what I mean? You're playing against a top team in Romania. Yeah. The crowd was so turbulent, it was like <laughs> humid, mm. it was like it was a different different experience, like crazy, crazy. Yeah. So Obviously, you, you go from basically the highlight of your career so far mm. at that time. You are 19. Yeah. And then, you know, it doesn't really turn out the way you would think it would go from there, right? So you're thinking, like, what is happening? Probably, I, I can't imagine um, what you're probably thinking at the time. How do you bounce back? after all the trials and tribulations after that, you know, you, you played in the lower leagues of England. Sometimes you got to go to a cold night in, I don't know, Stockport mm. or whatever. So how, how, how do you kind of get over that? And what kind of testament is that to your character? And just tell the people, how do you get over a situation like that? Um, so it was, for me, it was quite an um, embarrassing sort of thing. Mm. Because it was like, I went from that to coming back and not playing at all in yeah. the 23s. Um, and then getting younger players playing ahead of you. And then you're turning up to games, like fully dressed, because we had to wear suits, remember, to home games. Mm. And fully dressed, everyone sits down and he puts up the team. He doesn't even tell you who's 17th man, who's in, who's out. And then it's like, all right, I've got to walk straight past my peers that we were all bantering this week, we're going to do this, that, in the game, and they're going to play you or not. Mm. And obviously it kills your self-esteem. Mm. And um, mentally, it killed me at the time. Yeah. But for me, I'm grateful that it happened because mm. I wouldn't be the person who I am now if that didn't happen. Yeah. So obviously I went from that and I was just like, you know what? Like they, they even forced me out on loan that year. I went to Aldershot. Forced me out on loan as well. Yeah. <laughs> forced me out on loan. I went, I went to Aldershot. Um, didn't play a game um, and the guy didn't like me that bad that um, he actually even though I didn't play he just said yeah just be there for the experience and renew your contract there for another month and I said nah so he pulled me back in come back to the club and I said look I don't care if who I'm training with but I'm not going to be there just sitting down in it mm-hmm. so I come back and um, he offered me a pay up and I said nah I'm going to stay till the end of the season mm-hmm. so I can get full training I can get full physio full gym everything and yeah so I was literally in every single day of the week. Mm. Like every single day of the week. When everyone's off, I'm in. Yeah. Training with the 18s or something. Like, it's something stupid. Um, and then, that's that. And obviously, I, was, I wasn't I was receiving the best advice outside of football, obviously, with my agent and whatnot. Mm. Um, he obviously said, oh, this could happen, that could happen, this happened. Um, sorry, to, sorry to cut you. So, when when you get offered a payout, let's say, a payout, just so everyone knows, is when the club comes to you and they don't want to keep you and you don't really want to stay there either because the club don't want you and they'll offer you a percentage of your money, not all of it, um, where you can go take it and then you can go sign for another team. So people say that is the best solution because both parties are happy, then you go on with your career and also you get money and then you get paid from your next team. Mm. Or you stay for the end of the season, you 
take your money and then you know you have to wait until the summer let's say if in your situation you have to wait until the summer to find a new team and that's where everyone's trying to find a new team so how, how would you say what, what do you think tell the viewers what the best situation or solution you think personally be? for me it was more training mm. than the money yeah. it was like keeping fit up until the summer mm. whereas at the time I didn't have nowhere I could have gone to because like when speaking to clubs, they didn't think I'd get released kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, or if it wasn't that, they'd be like, oh, you haven't played. So it's like, yeah, yeah, where are you kind of going to go? Do you know what I mean? So yeah. at the time, it was just like, ah, right, cool. Um, I'm going to stay in train and I'll try find something. And obviously, as I said, like I had someone who said this could happen, that could happen and yeah. nothing materialised. Um, so at the end of the season, I found myself stranded. Um, and so sorry, I sacked the agent I had at the time and I got a new one um, and obviously that agent done a lot for me obviously he mm. got me a trial at Cambridge I played two matches for them first match man the match second match um, mm. done really well um, Sean Derry was the manager yeah so I said it wasn't for him I said alright cool mm. um, I went to where did I go to mm. I went to Dagenham Redbridge okay. John Stewart was the manager done my thing was playing well mm -hmm. um didn't assign me so I was going lower and lower and then I went on trial at Charlton mm -hmm. I went on trial at Charlton and um, um, yeah I done, I done alright I didn't do great but I done alright I done decent um, but like one thing about trials it takes its toll on your head innit like yeah. you're, you're thinking like, another trial yeah. um, I'm going to do another trial and it's like so yes yeah, so I went like Jason you all said look you're good what not but like the gaffer saw the, the last game and he just didn't think that like, you're ready and you're his type of player and whatnot. Mm. But it always seems like an excuse, isn't it? Yeah. Always. Uh, and I, or it's like one of them ones where you, you think, what is the reason? You know, you, you have a good game, like you said, you had at Cambridge mm. and you rip up the game. But like, what is the excuse? Like, what's the point of even bringing me in? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's, the, that's the really what kind of puts people off even going on trial. And, mm. you know, people can look like they're arrogant or big time, let's say, for not going on trial. But it's like, it's it's a kick in the teeth, you know, when mm. you keep going, you keep going, and then they keep saying no, and the reason there's no reason mm. at the end of the day. Now the the, the Cambridge one hurt me because yeah. it was more like like literally I got home and it was all over like the Cambridge paper saying that like, Ross stood out. Yeah. So it's like right, I'm gonna get signed here kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like you go back for a second game, yeah. and how I kind of realized something was wrong was because. You know how they do 45, 45 or 60, 30? Yeah. Different, differentiate the minutes. Yeah. I played the whole game the first game, the whole game the second game. And I was thinking, so what? Is it like the left back was injured or something? Like, was, do you know what I mean? Like, was it like, I'm just filling in for someone? Oh, yeah. Kind I, mean, of thing. I know what you mean. And I think that was the, the thing. Like, I just filled in for someone kind of thing. They Obviously, I've yeah. done my thing, but mm. it didn't really, nothing materialised. And by the way, you have to pay for your own expenses. You have to, you know, take the money out of your pocket. Everything. Your own food, everything. Petrol. Like, yeah, yeah, and really and truly, that opportunity and time could have been spent somewhere else. For more content like this, like, share and subscribe. Mm -hmm.